Today we're gonna to be showing you how you can create your very own 24 hour YouTube channel. There are tons of videos out there that show you how to create a music channel, but the problem is they don't show you step by step. That's what we have right here. It's a guide for you to be able to see exactly what you need to be doing to create this channel for yourself. And if you want these instructions, there's a link down below for you to get this for $15. If you can't afford it, no worries. Watch this video and we're gonna be showing you step-by-step step and you can have this to get started right now. We're going to be looking at a video, how they break down to create their own streaming channel. But the thing is, I'm gonna be stopping the video so you can actually see what you need to be doing. Even before you get started, as you're gonna be seeing this video, it's really important that you go and create yourself an account with Google Cloud Platform. If you do not know what that is, you can go and type in Google Cloud Platform. It will take you to a domain, cloud.google.com. You can click on this and you can get started by creating your own account. Remember, to create your account for Google Cloud Platform, what I would suggest to do is use a Gmail account or a G Suite account to get started. Once you have that account, you're gonna be able to log in into the Google Cloud Platform. Once you get onto the platform, it's really easy to feel overwhelmed because there's so many things that you could be doing because there's more than 20 different types of products and services. Now, what you can do is you can go on the left-hand side and search for um, uh, the compute engine, or you can use the search bar at the top to be able to find what you're looking for. In this video, we're going to scroll down and click on the compute engine, and then you're going to click on VM instances, and that's virtual mach machine instances. Once we get that page, we're going to then make sure that we create a new instance. If you're feeling overwhelmed, again, don't worry. If we look at this document right here, again, all you do is sign up, you sign in, you scroll down on the left-hand side, and you look for Compute Engine and then VM Instances. That's what you're gonna do. Or again, the alternative, in the search bar, you're gonna search for Compute Engine and you're gonna be fine. Then you're gonna enable the Compute Engine API. That's something you, you might have to do if this is brand new for you. And then you're going to click on create instance. Remember, what you're seeing on your screen might depend on the exact region or country of origin that you're in right now. So keep that in mind. It might look slightly different from yours. And depending on when you watch this video, Google is constantly updating their interface. But those are the exact steps that you're going to need to take. Those won't change. After we click click create instance, we're going to be now taken to creating a virtual machine. We're going to name the virtual machine and you can name it whatever you'd like. Then we're going to make sure that we go to the configure, um, the configuration for the machine. You're gonna go to custom. You're going to change the cores to one. And right here where it's talking about memory the video has it at three, but just keep in mind when I went through and did this, what did I have to do? I had to do the, I had to do the cores at two. So in the video, it showed um, one, you had to do two uh, where I was, and then the memory, we could do uh, three gigabytes. Then afterwards, uh, we're gonna go to the boot disk and change the operating system. So let's get back into that. So again, we're gonna boot the disk. We're going to change it. The operating system, Ubuntu, is that how you say it? Ubuntu, we're gonna change that. We're changing it to 18.04, and we're going to change the gigabytes to 50, and then you're going to click Select. Make sure you have all of that before you go on. It's really important that you have the right, the right um, parameters. Then you're going to allow the firewall, you're gonna say allow HTTP traffic and HTTPS traffic. Now here he's highlighting how much it would be, about $25 a month to have this, uh, this whole instance running, and you wanna do this. Now, we're gonna pass this, you're going to have it 
off. And that is um, basically we don't want to have the instant to shut off once we leave. If you turn it on, you could do that. But when you leave, it will shut everything off and it will shut your um, your instance off. So which means it would stop your 24 hour streaming. So you want to keep that off. It is cheaper to keep it on if you just want to say, hey, whenever I have this running and I'm in the in when I have the, um, you know, the remote access and everything we'll talk about later, um, you can do on and it's quite cheaper. So it went from twenty five dollars to eight dollars a month. Just keep in mind, I tried that and I left and then I had to redo everything. Just if you can and it's twenty five dollars a month. That's the investment to, to get started with this. You create, you click the create button. And from there, it's going to take a few moments for it to generate that VM instance. Again, it's going to be creating that operating system. It's going to be doing all of those things for you. So it's going to take a little while to make sure that you're um, having that up and running. Once you get this up and running, you're going to click the SSH button right there and then it's going to open the the terminal for you or it's going to transfer you over there you're going to be able to put more information in your virtual machine once it's connecting and don't worry when you're clicking certain things it will look like it's um you know if you're not used to being in the command line or something it might seem a little bit intimidating no worries now right here again they're telling you what to put in into the into the command lines. That's why we have it all written out right here with your command lines. So all the things that this person put in, this these are just commands that you're putting in to update what's going on with your operating system for you able for you to be able to log in. So you've got to enter these in your command line. And then this is step by step. Again, they're going to show you on the screen, but for me, when I needed to do it, I just wanted something that I can copy and paste. And you can even see this screen if you want to just, you know, have it. Or again, download this and, and uh, purchase this step by step. But you can you can just screenshot this and do it yourself. But um, yeah, let's get right into it. Step by step, you're going to be typing in all of these things. Okay, and you're going to do it one command at a time. And then you're going to click enter or return, and then all of this is going to be, again, loading and, and downloading the different packages and all of these things for your um, for your operating system. Again, you're going to have each thing set up right here. I remember the first time I was doing this, I was freaking out, looked like I was in the matrix or something, didn't think I could do it. Really, no worries. Take a deep breath. You're just going to be entering this information one line at a time. It's not a problem at all. If you want to know what these exact commands are, you can always just copy these commands and look it up on Google for you to know the exact meaning of each command that you're going to be doing. But basically, you're saying what packages you need to get, what's going to be happening. And then here, it's asking you yes or no when you're adding this to your um, operating system. And then it's going to be updating all of these things right here. And that's loading. I'm going to just go over here to make sure, again, this is step-by-step step what you're going to be doing. Then it's going to be asking you if you want to be adding a uh, password and everything like that. Remember when you're going to be adding the password and you can name it whatever you want. In the video, I think he does like one, two, three, four. Just keep in mind when you're adding your password, when it's on the terminal and everything like that, when you enter the password, it's not going to show up. They're not going to reveal what your password is going to be. So just keep that in mind. So don't be afraid when you don't see it show up or and everything like this. Okay, so it's asking, are you sure you want to do this? It's saying yes, okay. Okay, adding, unpacking some things for your your virtual machine, your VM. Remember, this might take just a few moments, a couple minutes as all this is processing and doing things. Okay, so it's telling to restart. Okay, right here where I was saying you're setting up a new password. Okay, so when you're setting up the new password, you're going to first put in password right there. And then it's going to say, okay, he's entering one, two, three, four. You're going to do this. And right when you're doing this on the command line, again, it's not going to show up. It's going to look blank. Do it twice. Now, from there, you're going to copy the IP address and paste it into the remote desktop connection. 
keep in mind something real quick. If you're using a PC and you're using the remote desktop um, um, connection, you can do this part. I'd like to pause for a second is I'm using this on a Mac. So what I had to do was you had to then go and download the Microsoft remote desktop so you can use that app on your Mac device to do the rest. Okay, so if you're using a PC, you can do what he just did, the remote desktop connection. I had to go, if I had to get the Microsoft remote desktop. That's the way I did it, and then go from there, okay? So I had to download that program. That was in order for me to grab the IP address right here that's provided on this line where it says your instance. Then when I'm coming in here with my session, I'm having the username root, and then the password is what you just created in the um, in the SSH, you say, okay. And that's going to allow you to go into that, uh, that portal. Okay. And this is what's going to look like for you. You're going to log in and this is what's going to happen. You are now in that virtual machine. You're in that operating system that you set up. You already set up the operating system because remember you added, uh, you Ubuntu, you already had that all set up. Now you're able to log into it. And that's what you just did. You just set it up. Congratulations. Now you might say, Doc, wait, that, wait a minute. That's not a, I'm not there yet. I don't have a 24 hour channel yet. Okay. Well, what we're doing next is we have to install VLC and we have to install OBS studio. Okay. OBS studio. So how are we going to do this? Remember, we're already at this point. If you're not at this point, make sure you're here or you Ask in the comment section down below if you're having trouble decaying this point. You come into this again. What do you have to do? It depends on what you're using. You're going to either use the remote desktop connection or you're going to use the Microsoft remote desktop if you're using a Mac. You come in here and then from there, you're going to install the VLC and OBS. So you're going to click applications at the top. You're going to do the terminal, terminal emulator. Again, it's going to allow you to be in the terminal right here and you're going to install. So this is the command to get install VLC. It's going to allow you to download the package. You're gonna say, do you wanna continue? You're gonna say Y for yes. Then it's going to be working. It's gonna unpack everything that you need. Don't worry, this is normal. Then afterwards, now that that is done, you're gonna make sure that you now clear everything. So you're going to say clear, return, and then now you're going to say install OBS Studio. This now allows you to have OBS so you can be running your, your video 24 hour. And because now you have your virtual machine up and running, when you loop the video, when you go into OBS and loop it, then you're going to be able to have this running 24 seven. You don't need to have another computer in your house running and all those things. You're going to have all of those things set up. You have VM, you'll have VLC and you're going to have OBS all done. Just like that. You can go to your applications. And now once you go to your applications, you're going to be able to see OBS. From there, there are tons of other videos that show you how to go into OBS and add the video that you want and all those things. And we're going to have links also to show you how to do that. Uh, there's a video right here when you're going into the how to make a 24 hour uh, YouTube channel and profit there. It's going to show you where you're going to go into OBS, where you can go down, add your stream, add, you know, loop, and then you're good to go. And that is how you create a 24-hour, 24-7 music channel on YouTube. Remember in the comment section down below, let me know if you have questions. But remember, that's why we have the guide. This was really confusing when I had it. I didn't know how to do it, and I just wish I had a step-by-step. -step. That's exactly why I created this guide for you. You can go get ahead and get it if you want. If this is something that you really want to do and start making some extra side money, you can do this with um, you can do this with Google Cloud Platform. Now, some might also ask, well, why don't I do it with Obubble and things like that? The reason we're doing it with Google Cloud Platform is you can do it for almost more than half the price. 
And so it's up to you. You can always have things like this. You're going to be able to use O Bubble and it will set itself up and everything. But you're looking at sixty nine dollars per month plus you need a remote access point. So you're looking closer to eighty five ninety, depending on the exact plan that you're getting. Again, there are different pub, um, different plans in O Bubble, but if you use Google Cloud Platform, you'll have the virtual machine understand what's going on with your own. Uh, operating system, understand what's happening in real time, and you can make the decision and be in more control. I'll see you in the next video.